Hello, and thank you for joining us this week here on What's the Story. I'm here with our very uh, special uh, live musical guests for this week, and it's two of the guys from Mud Honey. So, guys, for the people that don't know who you are out there, go ahead and uh, real quick tell us your name and uh, what you do in the band. My name is Steve Turner. I play the guitar. Uh, my name is Mark Arm. I play the guitar and do a little singing. And just darn out rocking. All right, so perhaps. <laughs> so uh, you guys have have uh, now been a band for uh, for like ten years, almost eleven years now. So, uh, what has kept you guys as a band um, together? Oh, that's that's the weird thing. Since we all live in the same house, it's not okay. quite sure. Some of us share the same bedroom. I'm not gonna say who or anything. Okay. Common love. Yeah, common love. Uh, mutual masturbation. All right, that's actually and what respect. I respect. can be heard in our songs. Okay, um, I actually <laughs> as can be fully heard in our songs. <laughs> actually, what I meant by that was uh, that you guys are, are one of the few bands th that, as far as I know, that you guys have really never had a, a real lineup change. Like none. A, like um, a lot of bands, like they're they're in and out in like two years and well, two actually albums. Actually, we had one lineup change. That was when Matt Lucan joined the band. Right. That was uh, we didn't have a bass player for okay. first for first, for first like month. month or so. No, we did. <laughs> but um, what is it? Is because one of my friends told me that he felt that it was, or that he thought that it was like the lack of um, of major label pressure and lack of big time fame that uh, kind of has held you guys together. Is that what you guys would think too? Or? Not necessarily. It's like I think it's more like the way we deal with what we have to begin with. I I would like to think that a massive amount of fame wouldn't destroy the band. Um, you know, we do more coke. Fact, <laughs> we uh, do a lot more coke, and <laughs> we might have to end up in rehab for a while. <laughs> but hopefully, you know, we get over that stage. Okay. The, the difficult years would be short, and, and <laughs> um, I think I think we're, yeah, you know, we yeah we do a lot more coke. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we 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 just don't tour as much as a lot of bands do, mm -hmm. and I think that helps. Yeah, that and um, like from the get go, we uh. uh I split our publishing four ways. Mm -hmm. Just all the money. So like all know, the money, any, money. Any, any band song is just like credited as written by Mud Honey. Okay. So basically, you know, like anyone, you know, if you're curious, like who wrote the song or whatever, it's like, well, everyone did their part. Mm -hmm. And then that gets rid of all the ego battles right there, generally, you know. Um, we didn't know this at the time. It's not like we thought this out. But just in retrospect, it's like, wow, most of the, pe the things I hear bands that have broken up or people that have quit bands complaining about are things to do with, like, you know, who gets what song on what yeah. record and, like, you know, well, somebody's making more money. And, you know, the Ramones being a classic example. First four albums, they split the, the songwriting credit mm -hmm. equally. After that, they hated each other. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so... Um so don't be greedy, future rock travelers. <laughs> All right, so um, I, I go, this is kind of going way back, and um, can you? I don't know if you guys like to talk about this, but uh, it's actually not that big of a deal, probably. But um, Cobain suicide? No, I'm not. Courtney, gonna, yes, I'm not, no. No, I'm not no. bringing that up. Actually, <laughs> if you want to talk about it, no, I, I don't even want to go there. Um, actually, what I was going to ask is, uh, do you guys want to give us just a little hint about, or a little um, insight on? on how it was like to uh, help start Sub Pop, like being the first release and, and going in there and splitting well, we with them. the first release. The you first were not the no, first no, release no, no. on first Sub Pop? The first release was a compilation album that's, that Bruce well, put out. Well, after, I mean, it started out as a fanzine. Yeah. And then went to I mean. a cassette fanzine, and then he did, like, an LP. Mm -hmm. uh, Sub Pop 100? Yeah, that was yeah. that was the first vinyl that he okay. put out. And, and then, then after that, it was, I think the first thing was either Green River or Soundgarden. Okay. I think Green River might have like just. I think Green River beat it. Maybe a bit. I'm not. Uh, uh, actually, I don't know. I wouldn't. I'm not quote myself. EP. Yeah. No, yeah, it did because did I remember that. Yeah, the way the Soundgarden layout was based on like the dry as a bone uh, thing okay. that Jeff came up with. Um. Okay, so I was totally wrong there. Yeah, Sorry. I mean, we were we were around there. You <laughs> uh -huh. know, I mean, they were, we were friends, but like we weren't mm -hmm. actively involved in it or anything. Mm -hmm. Um, I actually, I guess I kind of worked there a little bit in the early days. Stuffing singles. Yeah, yeah. stuffing yeah. singles and like you know doing the. U UPS mailing out and all that kind mm -hmm. of crap, but they never got a paycheck. I guess got free records. <laughs> all right. So, um, actually, since you brought up Green River, I, I guess I, it doesn't really bother me to bring it up. Um, were you guys uh kind of upset when uh, Pearl Jam made it huge and then shot everybody into looking for all these old uh, things that people could buy, like Green River stuff? Uh, no, 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 no. That, that was, was good for you. Okay. Came in handy. <laughs> <All right. laughs> well, why would we be upset with that? <laughs> Okay. You know, we're friends with those guys. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, I I was very psyched to see Stone Gossard as a rock star. <laughs> <laughs> it was my dream and his. <laughs> oh, actually, what, what I mean by that is, um, like, uh, 
for fastball, for instance, even though you guys probably don't like them. But um, I don't even know who they are. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, how's that? They they <laughs> <laughs> they uh, they're they're huge right now. They they have uh, old member Miles. He put out a, a couple other albums with two other bands, and I brought it when I did an interview with them I brought the album out and I said you know has anybody asked you to re-release this and he's like that's crap I don't even want to talk about my old stuff let's move on and so that's, that's what I mean guy from fastball yeah yeah well we but don't, you guys we don't have that problem we think everything we've ever, we've touched, ever touched is great, great. Okay. Yeah, we, uh, hence, hence the reissuing of the Mr. App and the calculations <laughs> on CD <All> right. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I know it's <laughs> I know it's been a while now but um what what kind of brought you guys uh, away from I mean, maybe probably just the money, but besides that, what kind of brought you guys away from being on the indie label band to sign with a record label like Reprise? Sub Pop was a mess when we left. Okay. They were struggling in severe difficulties, and like it was just getting uglier down there. And like um, we opted to leave before they went under and owed us a lot of money, or we ended up hating them for one other reason or another. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I. I'd, I'd known Bruce since, like, 1983. I don't know how long you've known him, but we'd, like, oh, you know, we're, like, close friends with him especially. And then then there got into this, like, strange, like, business dealing thing where, like, gee, Bruce, where's our money? Yeah. And you know? why can't the record come out when it's supposed to? Why do we have to wait three months for the record to come out now? We already have a tour scheduled to promote the record. <laughs> you know, you know just, just stuff like that. You know, and... and um, we wanted to get out of there before, you know, any, any the, the feelings got, like, really sour, you mm -hmm. know, more so than they were already, you know, and just kind of, you know, nip that at the bud. Okay. And um, if you're going to make a deal with the devil, you might as well make a deal with the devil instead mm -hmm. of, like, have your friends dressing like him. Okay. <laughs> All right. <laughs> um, okay, let's take it back, uh, uh, or to bring it up a couple years. Uh, with you guys' uh, Piece of Cake release, um, I know that I brought you uh, a lot of the notoriety that you uh, uh, that you guys experienced. Uh, it, were you guys kind of upset that that record didn't take off more, or were you just happy to have it take off no, as much no, as No, in did? retrospect, I'm kind of, uh, the only thing I, if, if I, if I regret anything, which is, rare and probably not even a regret at all but it's just I wish Piece of Cake was a better record it's not our favorite record oh, really okay yeah, so it, it just uh, happened to be the one that came out at the time like when uh, the whole grunge explosion mm -hmm. you know like hit the national consciousness and models were wearing like flannel shirts <laughs> with pre-ripped holes in them mm -hmm. <laughs> Okay, so um, now I guess do you want to tell us anything about your uh, your latest release about these how these rips are not pre-ripped, man. These are natural, authentic. Cool, you bought those at the Gap, rips. just like that, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> They're Levi's. The Gap doesn't sell me. Okay, right. okay. So yeah, do you want to tell us anything about your uh, your latest release, like how you approach this as, as opposed to like your last couple records? Um, well, we spent more time getting the material together this time around yeah. um, we just kind of like we took a year off after My Brother the Cow mm -hmm. and then just kind of slowly getting back together and coming up with songs and piecing together you know riffs and what have you that we had sitting around and um, there wasn't any feeling of any kind of pressure or anything you know I mean if grunge is not dead <laughs> it certainly is <laughs> just about gone so no one really cares about yeah. us at this point at least like you know like no one has any great expectations mm -hmm. for you know anything so we just kind of like taking our time kicking back and uh, then we ended up spending a lot more money on the recording too more time more money more, more songs time. more money more songs we had way, way too many songs than, than we needed too we had like 12 extra songs <laughs> and there wasn't the uh, the um, uh, like the record label didn't entice you to say okay put out a double album like Smashing Pumpkins or something I don't think no. they would uh, be enticing us to do that <laughs> okay <laughs> <laughs> and uh, w when they're, ha they're having hard enough time selling uh, a single CD <laughs> at an overly inflated price, as opposed to a double CD at a really, at a overly, really overly inflated <laughs> price. Right. So yeah, that wouldn't work too well. Okay. So uh, when can uh, fans of the band uh, look for like this other twelve songs that you guys had left over? Um, we only we recorded like another five of them or something. Yeah, oh, yeah. Like, five like songs we sitting even, around. We didn't, yeah. we didn't even record. We just kind of like kind of nipped them in the bud. And okay. then we probably, if we're gonna do anything with them, we probably rework some of them. Mm -hmm. Because I, I mean, there's we we not we didn't record them for a reason because we didn't yeah. think they were as strong as the other stuff. You know, I mean, we've been wrong about that, things like that in the past. <laughs> but for instance, I thought "Sweet Young Thing" was the A side to the single, and apparently okay. everyone gravitated towards "Touch Me, I'm Sick." Okay, yeah. There you go. 
All right. So <laughs> <laughs> I, I guess uh, that's it for me. Would you guys like to say anything else? I don't know what I didn't touch on that you want me to bring up. Like, um, I already told you I didn't want to go that one direction. So. Wow. Well, how about we're probably going to do another U.S. tour with Queens of the Stone Age. Well, let's um, hear it. Let's. February what about or March? It? Yeah, late February, early March, somewhere in there. We'll probably be back through somewhere. We're going to Australia. Um, of course, not. Even. <laughs> for, for the Australian viewers. <laughs> for the Australian viewers, we're, you know, but we're going. We're going to Australia in January, and then we'll mm -hmm. uh, probably in late February, March, tour in the states with okay. Queens of the Stone Age. And maybe Nebula will join up on a couple of those shows as well. Nebula's band we're playing with tonight. Okay. Uh, you should film them as well. All you right. Should, you should also try to do film. you know Fu Manchu? I do fo know all, Fu Manchu. All of Nebula's ex-members of Fu Manchu. Oh, okay. Which they makes them more Fu Manchu than Fu Manchu. <laughs> they, they, they love it when you say that, too. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a good, it's a good yeah, angle. Well, well, yeah, it's a really it's weird a thing that like they're all ex-members of the same band. <laughs> Actually, I've had Fu Manchu on my show a really? couple times, yeah. 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 And you might have had, uh, well, how long have you been doing this show? Uh, two years. So the first time I had them was about a year and a half ago. Was, was it different members? Uh, I think the drummer may have been different. Uh, the drummer might be here then. Okay. <laughs> I will look for that guy. <laughs> All right, well, I guess that's it from me. Okay. And uh, I just want to say thank you very much to... Should, uh, oh, maybe film uh, Black Kalima, because that's like uh, um, Gary Floyd's new band from... The Dicks and Sister Double Happy. Okay, yeah. And tonight we will be featuring a Dicks cover in the set. Probably. More than well, likely. most likely. I'm going to try to see if he'll sing it with us. Right. That would be Hate the Police, of which this uh, this fellow helped compose. <laughs> this fellow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I guess I'm done now. Okay. <laughs> and another thing. <laughs> and one more thing. <laughs> so I just want to say thanks a lot to uh, these guys here from Mudhoney, and uh, stick around for something from them coming up next here on What's the Story.